Hey guys, so this video is about the major electrolyte imbalances like calcium, magnesium, etc. And what happens if you have too much or too little in the body and what to do to treat it. Sodium, so sodium is abbreviated as NR. So you could have hyponatremia or hypernatremia. Hyponatremia is too little sodium in the body. Hypernatremia is too much sodium in the body. So the key to remember this is whenever you think sodium, think water. Water should follow sodium in a perfect balanced body. But if it's too little sodium, that means it's too much water. And if it's too much sodium, that means it's too little water because there's an imbalance. So think too little sodium, too much water, too much sodium, too little water. They have an inverse relationship. So if you have too little sodium, you're going to have signs and symptoms of someone who has too much water, like someone with heart failure. Those signs and symptoms are weight gain, hypotension, muscle cramps, seizures, weakness, confusion, tachycardia, nausea, vomiting, headache, etc. So what are you going to do if someone has too little sodium? You're going to give them sodium. And also you're going to restrict their fluids because that means they have too much water. You're going to take their weights because you want to see their fluid status and their eye nose. Some causes. So what could be some causes of too little sodium? You're losing it through the GI, SIADH, NPO, so nothing's going in your mouth. You have too much water, water intoxication, and medication that could be a side effect. For too much sodium, hypernitremia. So you want to think of someone who has too little water, someone who is dehydrated. You're going to have the same sign and symptoms. So you're going to have sticky mucous membranes. You know, if you're dehydrated, your mouth is dry. Fever, swollen dry tongue, hallucinations, lethargy, restlessness, irritability, seizures, tachycardia, hypertension, hyperreflexia, twitching, and pulmonary edema. So what are you going to do? You're going to put them on seizure precautions. And because they have too little water, you're going to give them fluid, diuretics, and you're going to restrict their sodium. Some causes could be dehydration, like we said, burns, kidney failure, and DI. The key point you want to know with sodium is that it could cause seizures, either too much or too little. So you want to put them on a seizure precaution. Potassium. Potassium is abbreviated with a K. Hypokalemia is too little potassium. Hyperkalemia is too much potassium. So when you think of potassium, think of a muscle. Your heart is a muscle, in your intestines is a muscle to move everything along so that you could have a bowel movement. So when you have too little of the muscle, you're going to have decreased bowel movements, you're going to have dysrhythmias because your heart is not contracting like it should be, you're going to have muscle weakness because it's a muscle and it's too little, so you're going to have weakness, etc. And when you have too much of a muscle, you're going to have twitching, diarrhea, and also dysrhythmias because your heart's muscle moving too fast, etc. So if you remember that, you remember potassium muscle, you should remember the signs and symptoms. So the signs and symptoms are too little potassium, too little muscle, is muscle weakness, fatigue, nausea, vomiting, irritability, confusion, decreased bowel motility, paresthesia, dysrhythmias, flat and inverted T weight. The signs and symptoms of too much potassium, hyperkalemia, is muscle twitching, paresthesia, increased bowel motility, ventricular dysrhythmias, peak T waves. So how I remember the difference between peak T-waves and flat T-waves is that when you have too little potassium, think little, so you have little T-waves. When you have too much potassium, think tall, think big, big T-waves. What you're going to do for too little T-waves, you're going to put them on full precautions because they have weakness. You're going to give them potassium because they don't have enough potassium. You're going to do an EKG because they could have dysrhythmias. You're going to do the eye and nose and give them medication. For hyperkalemia, for too much potassium, you can do an EKG because it also could cause dysrhythmias. You could do dialysis to flush away the potassium and give them medications. Causes of too little potassium, medications like diuretics because they take away the potassium, body fluid losses, so you're losing it from vomiting, etc. Causes of too much potassium also could be medications because you could have potassium sparing medications that don't take away potassium, adrenal insufficiency, renal failure, and acidosis. Calcium, which is abbreviated as CA, magnesium, which is abbreviated MG, and phosphorus, which is abbreviated with a P. So I'm going to be doing them all together. The reason why I'm doing them all together is because too little calcium and magnesium and too much phosphorus have the same signs and symptoms and the same interventions, and too much calcium and magnesium and too little phosphorus have the same interventions and signs and symptoms also. So the way I like to remember this is CM plus P. You can remember that like come mom plus pop. C stands for calcium, M stands for magnesium, so they're together, plus the phosphorus, because you're writing them plus in between because the phosphorus has an inverse relationship with both of them. So here's a sign of the symptom. On the left side, you're going to see when you have too little calcium and magnesium, CM, 
and too much phosphorus plus the pee, you're going to have the same signs and symptoms. So that is tetany, cramps, paresthesia, dysrhythmias, trousseau sign, and Chavec sign seizures. Trousseau sign is when you put a blood pressure cuff on the person's arm, their hands and fingers are going to go upward, like they curl upward. And Chovec sign is that when you tap on their facial nerve, they're going to twitch. The signs and symptoms of too much CM plus P, so too much calcium, magnesium, and too little phosphorus, is muscle weakness, hyporeflexia, nausea and vomiting, lethargy, coma, dysrhythmias, bone pain. And then with calcium specifically, kidney stones. So as you can see, if you have too little calcium, magnesium, and too much phosphorus, you're going to have muscle is going to be excited and overworking. If you have too much calcium, magnesium, and too little phosphorus, you're going to have weakness and, and all the reflexes are going to go down. So the intervention should be around the same. So when you have too little calcium, magnesium, and too much phosphorus, so CM plus P, you're going to put them on seizure precaution because they could have a seizure. You're going to give them what they're missing. So if it's calcium or magnesium, etc. And if you give them calcium, you're going to give them vitamin D with it because it helps with absorption. You're going to monitor for orthostatic hypotension because they could have a seizure. And with potassium, it's too much. So you're going to look at the other side of what the interventions are for the too much. So you're going to give them fluid, medication, monitor the cardiac, dialysis, etc. Because all those stuff get rid of whatever you have too much of. Then for too much calcium or magnesium and too little phosphorus, so if you have too much of anything, you're going to give them fluids to flush it out medications to get it out. You want to monitor the heart and you want to do dialysis to get everything out. The causes. So the causes are all different, which is why they're all in different columns. So the first we're going to start with is calcium. So what could cause too little calcium? Hypoparathyroidism, little magnesium, because they both go together. Vitamin D deficiency, because it helps with absorption. GI losses, kidney failure, and diseases like a lot of GI diseases like celiac, etc. and alcohol. So too little magnesium is, could also be lost through GI through too little calcium, DKA, TPN, laxative abuse, medications, and, hy and hyperparathyroidism. Too much phosphorus can be caused by renal failure, vitamin D, or phosphorus, excess chemo, excess enema, acidosis, anything that's keeping in too much phosphorus. So now we go on to hypercalcemia, magnesium, and hypophosphorus. So too much calcium can be caused by the opposite of too little, hyperparathyroidism, dehydration, vitamin D excess, medications, immobilization, etc. Too much magnesium can be caused by renal failure, adrenal insufficiency, and laxative overdose. Too little phosphorus can be caused by vitamin D deficiency, refeeding, alcohol, DKA, TPN, and acid burns. Okay, here's a recap of everything. When we're talking about sodium, too little sodium, you're going to think of as signs and symptoms of dehydration. Too much sodium, you're going to think of as signs and symptoms of heart failure or fluid overload. Potassium, you're going to think of a muscle. So you have to have too little of a muscle, the muscle's not working. And you're going to have a little for too little T waves. Too much of the muscle, you're going to think of the muscle overworking, so twitching, etc. And you're going to have big T waves. And then we talked about calcium, magnesium, and phosphorus. So you're going to think come mom plus pops. Calcium, magnesium, plus phosphorus. Calcium and magnesium go together, and phosphorus is the opposite. So when calcium and magnesium go down, phosphorus goes up, and you have muscle cramps, tetany, trousseau, and trovec signs. When calcium and magnesium go up and phosphorus go down, you're going to have muscle weakness, hyporeflexes, nausea, vomiting, and lethargy. So that's it for this video. Thank you very much for watching, and please like and subscribe for more. If you want a specific video on a topic you don't understand, then write it in the comment section, and I will try to do that. Thank you.